Now, I have a question. I have a question. X minus 1, sorry, X plus 1 mod X square minus X minus 2. Okay? Is this function differentiable at x equal to minus 1? Check the differentiability at x equal to minus 1. If you want, you may redefine the function. Correct? Some of you may would like to plot it and also check. Of course, plotting is a non uh, mathematical, non algebraic way of just looking at the graph and coming with it. Is it definition? Is it definition that two? I have to say two, it's not. But it's minus one, it should be a minus one. Both the L's and R's are the same. One, two, three. Minus one, how do you get it? So here we basically are going to have a point where one side has the next one of the other, so obviously I have to do it. Yes, what is the conclusion? Yeah, so the conclusion is not differentiable, but uh, at minus one. At minus one, at minus one. At minus one. Absolutely correct. At two it is not differentiable, but at minus one it is. You know why? Because, because, when you factorize this, the friend of this is present here to save it. Correct? But x minus 2 unfortunately doesn't have a friend outside to save it. Right? So because of the presence of x plus 1, mod of x plus 1 got saved and it became continuous at minus 1 and differentiable at minus 1. Correct? But it is not differentiable at 2. Okay? This is just by the analysis that we had a little while ago. But if I have to do this problem without graphical reference or without that property, how would I do this problem? Normally, I have to redefine such functions. Whenever I'm dealing with mod function, GIF function, or any kind of a special function, always redefine it first. Redefining means getting rid of the mod, getting rid of those special symbols, make it simple looking, correct? Any operation should be done by making it simple looking, right? Now I would like all of you to tell me what is the sign scheme of this particular function? Sign scheme means daily curve, positive, negative, positive. Why I am referring to the sign scheme for this? Who doesn't know daily curve? Not sure. It's very simple. You just first write down the zeros of these factors on the number line. So when will x plus 1 become 0? At negative 1. When will x minus 2 become 0? At 2. Plot them on the number line. Correct? First step done. Second step is take a value, any value in this interval greater than 2. Any number greater than 2 you choose. 3. Put 3 here, what is, what is the answer for this certificate? Is it a positive quantity or a negative quantity? Just that, I don't want to find it. Positive. So for this entire interval, this function will stay positive. That means any value you choose beyond 2, that is 3, 4, 500, 500, 600, 5 lakhs, whatever, so the expression will always be positive. If it is positive, this interval will automatically become negative if the power of x minus 2 here is an odd number. Are you getting this point? Yes. This is something which very less people know. Correct? Okay? Let's say you are crossing 2 and going to the left side. Okay? If 2 is associated with a factor which has got an odd power on it, the sign will switch. So obviously a question will arise in your mind, what if there was an even power on x minus 2? It will retain the same sign. Are you getting this one? Now, so this will become negative. Now I am crossing which number? 
minus 1. So see the factor from which minus 1 is coming. X plus 1. If it has an odd power sign, we'll again switch. Are you getting this one? This is called the wavy curve sign scheme. Where you try to know the sign of polynomial functions. In fact, it can work for rational functions as well. In some intervals of X. Okay. Now why am I doing this? I am doing this to know more about this guy. <coughs> Correct? So I know that mod of something remains that something if that something was already positive. Right? Mod is useless. What is mod of 5? 5. Mod of 10? 10. So if something is already positive, mod is useless there. So I can say mod of x square minus x minus 2 would remain x square minus x minus 2 if your x was already greater than 2 or your x was less than equal to minus 1 in between what is happening in between your x square minus x minus 2 was becoming negative isn't it what will mod do to it it will try to make it positive how do you make a negative number positive by putting an extra negative sign in front of it. So you will get negative of x square minus x minus 2 if your x were to belong to the interval minus 1 to 2. Now most of you would ask, say you include it to here also, you include it to here also. It doesn't matter because at 2 it is either plus 0 or minus 0 which is ultimately 0. 0 doesn't have a sign. Right? Right? 1 also, sorry, minus 1 also are included both the places. By the way, this is not that clear, it is minus 1. Okay? That's why at minus 1, I can include it at both the places because it is actually zero. Now, if I know this definition, what will be x plus 1 times this? So if I multiply x plus 1 here, can I say x plus 1 will multiply to this also? x plus 1 will multiply to this also? Correct? Yes or no? Correct. Is it? Now, what points will I test the differentiability and continuity? Prithvi with i. Which points will I test the differentiability? At minus 1 and... Uh... Okay, now there is something called critical points. Just like we had critical points in case of continuity. We don't sit and check for all the points in the world because again, waste of time. We only check at those points where the function is changing its definition provided we know that the function is a safe function. For example, this is a polynomial function. Right? And in the first property itself I stated that polynomial functions are continuous and differentiable everywhere. So why waste time checking it at let's say 5 or a 10 or a 100? Because I know I am going to get a continuous and differentiable function. But where it is changing the definition from one function to another function, there may be a break and hence there may be a non-differentiability. Or there may be a corner and hence there may be a non-differentiability. Getting this point done. So I will only check at those points which we refer to as the critical points. So, what are the critical points that I need to pass through? Let me get it in a proper way so that you make sense out of it. So x plus 1 mod x square minus x minus 2. Can I say when x is less than equal to minus 1, the function was behaving as x plus 1 x square minus x minus 2. When it was between minus 1 and 2, my function was behaving as negative x plus 1 into x square minus x minus 2. And when my function was greater than or equal to 2, it was again behaving as the previous function, this one. Is that fine? Now tell me what are the critical points? Minus 1 and 2. Because at these points my function is changing its definition. So let us check at minus 1. First thing first, minus 1. Will I waste checking my uh, will I waste my time checking its continuity at minus one? <laughs> the, the main reason behind including minus one at both the places is because I knew it's continuous. 
polynomial and a modulus both are continuous. So their product will also be continuous. There is no point checking it. Correct? I directly jump to differentiability. But will I use my first principles? Oh my god, that would be too much to work. So now, welcome to the JE world. Welcome to the competitive exam world. In school only you will do your first principle test. When you are actually solving it in CET or BITSAT or JE main, whatever exams we are preparing for, we will do a shortcut. What is the shortcut? If I have to find the left hand derivative at minus 1, just differentiate the function which is left of minus 1 and put minus 1. Which is the function left of minus 1? Is it this or is it this? The first one. Differentiate it the normal way. Whatever rules you know, product, chain, quotient, whatever you know, differentiate the normal way, put x equal to 1 minus 1 and tell me the answer that you get. Prithvi, multiply and differentiate or you can use uh, product rule also. <laughs> left to minus 1 means slightly lesser than minus 1. Should we simplify? Of course, you give me the value. You give me the value. You give me the value, right? Differentiate this guy, differentiate this guy and put x equal to minus 1, give me the answer. Let's confirm for all this. And if you are making a mistake in differentiating, what are the zeros? It's 0. Half the class 0. x plus 1, 2x minus 1. x square minus x minus 2. Zero. Put x as minus 1, this will become 0. This will become 1. Plus 1, minus 2, it's becoming 0. Maybe not the 
the left of the slope will just be negative over the peak, so that it You're seeing something here. I mean, uh, they're essentially the same function, it's just that the one in the middle has a negative, so the slope of that will be negative. Yeah, of course. You don't have to find it <laughs> Is it fine? <coughs> well, I'm not done with the properties yet. Uh, I think I did the third one so far. Yeah, yeah, please, please. Those who are hungry can eat. Those who are thirsty can drink. Water. Water. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>